Hey everyone, welcome back to Safe Fitness Training. I'm going to address a few frequently asked questions today, and this is actually a section of my newest at-home course as well. So uh, again, this is more of a bonus session because I get in a little bit deeper into some of these questions, and that, that is, how many exercises should I do per, per session? How frequently should I do this? How many times a week should I do this? And then of course, you know, how do I build my workout from here? You know, if I feel like I want to add some more exercises, how do I do that? This is the answer for it. And then I want to get in a little bit deeper at the very end of this video. But before we get started, there's two free PDFs for at-home exercise down below. This course was developed specifically for seniors and elderly. And, you know, we're using these timed static contractions that are safe for everybody, but they give us the biological stimulus scientifically that our body needs. So these are very important distinctions to make when you're choosing an exercise program. You need it to be intense enough to make a difference. So that's what we're talking about here is high intensity strength training. What this is, is we're working our body in the manner when this is basically stimulus organism response, which essentially all this means is, is that the workout is a stimulus to the organism and then the adaptive response is what happens after the fact. This is while we're resting. This is the three to four days off that we take in between sessions. This adaptive response is important because it's the goal of exercise. The goal of exercise is to get that adaptive response. The way to get the best health response is to move the muscles to momentary muscular failure, the point where we cannot move any further. So with all of that being said, here's the video from my course that talks about some of these topics in further detail, how to build your workout. Um, this will help you out for sure. If you're a little bit lost on how to move forward from the basics. The questions I address here are how many exercises should I do, how frequently should I do it, and which exercises should I substitute for other exercises. So my first piece of advice is you want to do the compound exercises first in your routine. The only reason why is because if you end up having to stop for some reason, then you've done the most important ones, the ones that give you the absolute most bang for your buck, the best um, benefits. The more muscles we work in one exercise, the more we get from it. So we're, what we're talking about here is the squat. We're also talking about the pullover, the chest push on the floor, or also the chest fly with those towels at the dining room workout. All of these would be considered very important muscle groups, the larger ones. The squat counts the most, <laughs> of course, and these work mul multiple muscle groups. So I would start there and add from there. Both of these things are templates just for you to choose from. High intensity exercise session usually consists of five to seven exercises. We don't need to add a ton of exercise, and I'll get to this in a minute here. We don't need to add a ton of exercise unless we're not getting to maximum intensity. That's the big thing to really uncover and think about here. So in a normal workout, like the templates that you have here, of course, the dining room table template is for people who don't want to or can't get up and down off the ground. These are exercises, all of them work the entire full body in a very intense manner if you push yourself to that highest intensity as hard as you dare through all of this. The, I would put the squat in a workout, I would put that pullover in a workout, or the lateral raise, I would also do the chest fly, and then you could pick from the abduction and adduction. Essentially, with the lower body, we would call that the triad, the squat, the abduction, the adduction. All three of those cover the majority of the lower body. Essentially, that's all you would need to work, but you can always add, every once in a while, another exercise like the calves or I'm gonna also add the shin muscles in a little bit here as a bonus also. For the upper body, I would just have a few exercises, maybe two or three, and that would typically be the chest, a back exercise. You know, for that pullover or the lateral raise, if you're comfortable with holding onto a bar and squeezing your shoulder blades together with maybe your, your knees in a chair and just hanging from a bar and pulling. Uh, again, that's another bonus exercise. None of these are necessary, 
the templates are the ones that you want to start from and then add what you can. And what you can't add is absolutely fine. So I would say, you know, my favorite workout at home is going to start with a squat. I'm going to do a pullover or I'm going to do the, the lat the lat pull, the basically a, a static hold with the bar. I'm also going to do a chest exercise. Typically, I'll do the chest push on the ground. So, you know, pushing against the floor, essentially, because that'll work my triceps, my chest, the front of my deltoids, the shoulders. And then from there, I would probably do biceps or triceps and then maybe a crunch. You know, I only do seven exercises. I don't do any more than that. And everyone's a little bit different. I, I wouldn't really go above seven exercises. Now, here's the kicker. If you're not getting to highest intensity possible, and this is tough to gauge without someone watching or guiding you to that. Um, that's why, you know, working with a fitness trainer one-on-one -on -one for a session or for a consultation can be really easy to know if you're getting to momentary muscular failure. That's one of the important things that I'm going to be, um, you know, of course, adding uh, when the course is purchased. Of course, you can do a premium consultation if you have that money to put into it just to assure you're hitting momentary muscular failure because that's the difference with exercise with everything. So this is one of my favorite distinctions and analogies to make. And it was actually on Doug, Dr. Doug McGuff's YouTube channel. He said that one of his friends uses this as an analogy to describe the three different factors that we can play with while we're doing strength training. And that is volume, frequency, and intensity. So this all has to do with that question, what I'm getting to here the questions, the main three frequently asked questions that we're talking about here. Volume is basically just how many exercises you're doing during a workout. So, uh, you know, seven, seven exercises, typically what I'm doing. Uh, frequency, you know, I typically am only doing this once a week right now. And that's because I'm not, uh, I have a lot going on. I'm planning my workouts, uh, you know, huh, as often as I can. <laughs> I'll say that right now. And then, of course, if, uh, intensity is, you know, how intense this is, how intense you're pushing your body. Now, with uh, timed static contractions at home, the way that we're doing things in this course, it's a little bit difficult to gauge how intense you're pushing yourself. You don't have weights to resist against, and so it's all your own effort that you're putting in. That's why I stress so deeply how important intensity is. Intensity is the important factor that makes us only have to do this once a week. If we're getting to full intensity, we only really do need to do it once a week for those health benefits. If you're not getting to full intensity, you will have to do it a lot more. How can you gauge this? When you can't stand to hold that position any longer, and I'm not saying when it starts burning, I'm saying when you cannot stand to hold that position any longer whatsoever, then you're probably close to momentary muscular failure. <laughs> Our minds can lie to us and they can tell us that we're at that point of momentary muscular failure. And from the perspective of someone who has administered this workout for eight years, it is very, very tricky how the mind can try to convince you of it. So that's something to definitely keep in mind. And on to the analogy. I'm sorry I beat that into the ground here but I'm gonna keep doing so. Intensity equals results. Effort equals results. Back to the analogy. Volume, frequency, and intensity. This could be three different factors. Let's say uh, one of these factors is you can live in a really cool place, right? Or, or you can make a bunch of money. Or you can have a bunch of free time. Now, of course, this is assuming that you can't have all three of those things, which I know that you can have all three of those things, but that's neither here nor there. Let's assume that you can only have two of those things, two of those factors, which would you choose? Well, in high intensity strength training, of course, you know, we it choose intensity because we're choosing efficiency. That's what this is about. If our intensity is high, 
our volume can be low, the amount of exercises we do, and our frequency can be low as well, uh, which is how many times a week we do this. If our intensity isn't at our own maximum level of highest intensity possible, then our volume and our frequency will have to be a little bit higher to compensate for that in order to get all of the results from exercise. That's why within high intensity strength training and with in this realm, we try to get to the highest intensity because we don't want to spend a ton of time in the gym. This is exactly what we're talking about. And it, the, these principles, it, there's nothing wrong with volume training. There's nothing wrong with doing a ton of exercises if you want, but it, it's going to exhaust your body and it's going to overexert you if you're getting to that highest intensity. Now, of course, if you're not getting to that highest intensity, in order to feel this, in order to get those health benefits, the myokines flooding your body, you know, building more muscle, just simply hypertrophy, muscle growth, you know, all of these factors, if you're getting to the highest intensity, you really don't have to do it a whole lot. So that's the video. Um, I'm going to add a whole lot more bonuses to these courses. Um, I hope you'll have a wonderful day. I'll see you on the next video.